Hey everyone, I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video I'm gonna do something kind of fun, kind of informative, a little bit of infotainment here. I'm gonna compare two different Jazz Masters. First of all, my brand new Fender American Professional 2 Jazz Master. These are $1,600 brand new before taxes, fees, whatever else you have to deal with. And my Squire Vintage Modified Jazz Master, which I've highly modern modified, I guess. So it's a modern modified vintage modified Jazz Master. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, these aren't in production anymore, but you can get them on the used market floating in between $300 and $400, depending on what's going on there. So we'll call the value $350 bucks for the core of this guitar, the neck, the body, you know, the tuners, whatever's left of <laughs> the original components. So let's get into what I've done as far as upgrades on the Squire here. Obviously, I've changed the pickguard. I'm not going to count cosmetic stuff into the value here because I've changed the pickguard. Uh, I've swapped in white, you know, plastic hardware and things like that. None of that matters. It's all just cosmetic. But I have swapped in a new tremolo. This is a Descendant tremolo by Swope Guitars. 175 bucks for one of those. Uh, then this guitar, actually, when I bought it used, it came with a mastery bridge. One of the big reasons I bought this thing, 300 bucks. I got it used with a mastery included, but that mastery bridge is worth at least 175 bucks. And then I threw a set of pickups in here. These are Lambertones. I'm pretty sure those are worth around 250 bucks new for the set of Lambertones there. So all in all, I've got uh, $600 worth of upgrades into this guitar. Um, you add that to the value of 350, 400, let's, let's just call it a grand. We could call it somewhere between a 900 and thousand dollar guitar on paper right now. You know, you know, there's a discussion to be had that when you upgrade a guitar, you don't really get to sell it for the you know cost of the upgrades. You lose value when you do that, but that's a whole other discussion. So anyways, let's get into some sound comparisons. I wanna start with the Fender Am Pro 2 here. By the way, these do have different strings on them. I keep 11s on this. I haven't changed the strings on this yet. Uh, the Am Pro 2, I think, comes with a set of 9s on there. So there will be some differences just because of that. All right, another big difference is that there's a lot more pickup options. Pickup selection options, pickup tone options with the Am Pro 2 here. First of all, the bridge pickup can coil tap with this push push knob here, which takes it from a hotter modern wind down to a vintage style lower output wind. Also, there's a big difference with the rhythm circuit on a stock normal Jazz Master uh, and on this Jazz Master where I have it wired pretty normal. Um, the rhythm circuit isolates the neck pickup and runs it through a new set of pots with these roller knobs here, which have a different value than your normal pots, which make it darker, kind of creamier, a little bit warmer, you know, things like that. You still have those roller pots here with a different value on the Am Pro 2, but when you engage this, it turns on both pickups and puts them into series mode, I think. I always get it mixed up. Whatever normal is, it's the opposite of that. It basically wires them like a big hot humbucker that goes across the entire range of your string here. It's a really neat mod to have. It's a really neat different sound to have, and I'm glad they did it, but it is a big difference between these two guitars. So anyways, here are the pickups. I'm gonna start on the neck, because I'm a big appreciator of Jazzmaster neck pickups. Here's the middle position. Middle position with that bridge pickup coil tapped. Bridge position, no coil tap. Twang City there. All right, coil tap engaged. And now the rhythm circuit with the coil tap uh, not engaged because that does affect it. And now 
now with the coil tap engaged. <laughs> Now on to the Squire. Now let's do it with some dirt on there. Go back to the bridge position. Middle. Neck. And the rhythm circuit. Back to the Ampro 2. Start off on the bridge with some dirt. Vintage wind. Middle position, modern wind. Middle position, vintage wind setting. I like that. I like the vintage one. I'm glad they put that in there. Neck position. And then the rhythm position. That rhythm position really gives you some extra beef for extra gain and stuff like that. So, yeah, there's some big sound differences here. If, uh, you know, the YouTube algorithm doesn't crush the audio too much. Uh, I'd say, you know, generally the pickups in the Ampro 2 are brighter, twangier, thinner, uh, especially on the bridge position. These Lambertone pickups are wonderful. They just really are. They're warm and fat sounding. The bridge pickup is actually a humbucker in this, so that kind of contributes to that. Um, but I honestly think they're both great pickups. Both guitars have a great sound to them. I think I tend to prefer the more traditional sound of these pickups. Um, neither of them really have fully historically accurate jazz master pickups in them. That is for sure. There's a different construction in here, but I feel like the sound I get out of the Ampro 2 kind of hits that vintage itch, that retro itch quite a bit better. Uh, and then, you know, that rhythm circuit option up there gives me some big fat humbucker sounds, you know, if I need them. Uh, but these Lambertones, are really wonderful. And I honestly think that the sound of these is probably what most players these days, most modern players using offsets are going to prefer uh, because it's a more modern sounding pickup. Uh, there's more low end and uh, kind of like low mids and things like that going on with these pickups in general. Um, so yeah, it's really a matter of taste. I think they're both fine. There's no pickup here that I think is bad in any way. I would at least hope not at the price point of these things. Obviously, you get more options with the Ampro 2. You could get Tweaky and put those into an upgraded cheap guitar yourself, though. You could do the Series Parallel option there. You could put a push pull in here for relatively cheap and do either a coil cut on a humbucker like this or get a pickup that has a coil tap option if you wanted to. There's, you know, the sky's the limit with modifications. You can really go for it. Now let's talk about uh, the hardware differences. I've got a Mastery and a Descendant on here. This has the Fender uh, Mustang saddled style bridge here and their, uh, what's it called? The Panorama Tremolo. So let's do a quick play around with these. And then I'll kind of talk about my thoughts about the two different sets of hardware.
I really uh, whammied it out of tune there. Why do people upgrade bridges in offsets? There's some good reasons why. Uh, typically with Jazz Masters, they come stock with the Jazz Master style bridge that doesn't have string slots in it. It has these you know, multitude of ridges and the strings can tend to pop around in them when they're not set up quite right. Also, you can get a lot of buzzing from those vintage style bridges. I've got that style bridge on my, uh, my Jaguar hanging back there and it's rusted into place uh, in a way where it doesn't have those issues. <laughs> the strings seem to stay in place and the saddles don't rattle around because it's all just kind of fused together as one thing, you know, <laughs> 40 years into its life or whatever. But anyways, I think the bridge they have on the Ampro 2 is rock solid. I haven't gotten any buzzing out of it. The saddles sit together extremely snugly. I can't push them together. They don't shift or anything like that. Um, I'm not getting any rattling or buzzing. No strings are popping out, anything like that. Uh, the neck angle is set just right so there's a decent break angle against the bridge to hold it all together. And that's really, honestly, the main thing people need to do if they're having trouble with their bridge. Do that first. Shim your neck adjust the angle of your neck and it will probably help the issues that you're having with whatever bridge you're using. So why do people go for the mastery bridges? Well, it's a quick fix. It solves a lot of issues. It gets rid of the buzzing. Uh, it gives you deep, deep, deep string slots here that the strings are never gonna pop out of. So if you've ever had to deal with that and you're like, never again, the mastery will solve it for you. Still though, it's a good idea to adjust your neck, to adjust the shim in your neck, to adjust your neck angle, to get the most out of your offset. Uh, it helps with various issues, but it's a rock solid piece of engineering. It makes these offsets feel more modern in their playability, where you don't you know, have these rattling, buzzing sorts of issues. You don't have the whole thing shifting around because, because traditionally jazz master bridges sit on a pivoting thimble sort of situation where these are more locked in kind of solid. This as well is locked into like a nylon thimble that keeps it from rocking in an extreme sort of way. I honestly don't mind uh, the floating kind of rocking on a thimble sort of concept. That's how it is in my Jaguar. Um, you kind of learn after a while using these bridges that are set up in that vintage way to not rest the full weight of your arm on the bridge anymore because you will push it uh, out of intonation. It's really hard for me to say what's better or worse in this scenario. They're just slightly different flavors. Uh, the trims here are different. The Ampro 2 has the Panorama uh, new version of the Fender offset trim, which gives you a wider range as you dive bomb it. I already did a video on that a while back. Maybe I'll uh, grab the chart to put up here, but the Panorama just has a much wider range. You can almost dive it down to a full octave. I think it goes from E down to like F sharp or something like that. Where the Descendant is much more subtle. It's much more reflective of an original vintage version of this unit where it's, you know, you can really just go ape crazy 
you know, moving that bar around and it's a much more subtle kind of variation in your pitch. Not as subtle as like a big speed, but more subtle than this for sure. Uh, so for a more classic feel, I think the Descendant gets it, but for a more modern option, I really like this Panorama. I really do. I'm looking forward to when they sell these as aftermarket options for people to put into their guitars because I think people are going to really like them. And that, and that leaves us with the most important part of all of these, the neck, the playability, where all the action and the fun and the drama happens is on the neck, really. A couple major differences between these two necks. You get an extra fret with the Ampro 2. It has that little wood hangover right here that gives you just one more fret. That's six more notes, guys, <laughs> across all the strings. It's a nice option to have. It's not a deal breaker for me. I play guitars with far fewer frets. <laughs> My Duo Sonic has a, a few less frets than either of these guitars, and I'm just fine with it. I don't need to be all the way up there. Uh, the edges of the fretboard are completely different between these two guitars. The Ampro 2 features a very rolled, very comfortable fretboard uh, where the fretboard is actually rolled around the frets, making the whole edge of the whole thing up and down very soft and very comfortable. I mean, this is a Squire neck. It feels like a Squire neck. The edges, you know, they're soft, but they're not rolled. Uh, the frets are very, very good for an affordable guitar. For a $400 guitar, for a $300 guitar, they're excellent frets. I've certainly encountered worse frets on more expensive guitars, but there's something there. There is something that is much harder to upgrade on the Squire as far as the playability goes. Um, it's not at the same level. It's good. It's, play, it's playable for sure. Nothing about the fretwork on here would impede me or keep me from playing my best at a gig, in a recording, anything like that. But there is a comfort thing. There is a tactile response. There is a confidence you get with a neck that feels higher end. There's a pleasure factor <laughs> that is very hard to measure, but there's, there's something about it. Where I, when I'm playing this guitar versus this one, I feel like I'm more dialed in. I feel like I'm not spending as much time, you know, thinking about my playing, worrying about uh, how I'm going to get from one spot to the next. There's more of a confidence sort of element happening when I play this guitar or higher end guitars in general, it's just because the necks and the frets are dialed in quite a bit nicer. So there's something to that. Also, the neck shape is different. The Squire features, the Squire features a wider, slightly fatter, not in thickness, but in how fat it gets towards the edges style neck, where the Ampro 2 feels more compact, still modern, but more compact in a way. Um, I couldn't tell you which one I prefer as far as neck shape. I think they both have their merits. But still, there's something to the fretwork and just the comfort of the edge of the fretboard on the Ampro 2. Uh, nut differences. Nuts are important. They are a swappable thing. I haven't swapped the nut on this, but you might have noticed that I did have, have to tune this after I dive-bombed it. I didn't have to tune this after I dive-bombed uh, the Ampro 2. Uh, this features a bone nut that has been cut very well. Um, I don't know if the bridge comes into play with that tuning stability. I've got a mastery on here. It shouldn't really. It should be the same, better, around the same-ish, I guess. But there is a synthetic nut of some kind on here. It might even be some kind of graph tech nut. I don't know. Um, but it is not the same kind of bone nut at all. It is some sort of other material. I should do a, I should do a weight difference. They feel very similar to me. but some people care about that. So let's see if I can find my scale. All right, the Squire, let's see if I can do this by, just by balancing it. 
eight pounds, six ounces. It's almost exactly the same. Eight pounds, 5.7 ounces. <laughs> so they're very, very similar. Let me do a quick thing. I wanna just observe the resonance of the body. That should be a thing. I should drop down the mic and record the acoustic sound of it. Not the most resonant body as far as it, you know, feels against my tummy there. <laughs> the vibrations against my body. Some guitars can be so resonant that it feels like it's vibrating all the air in your lungs. And I don't think you're ever gonna get that with a fairly traditional jazz master, just because of the way the bridge floats and things like that. All right, the acoustic sound of the Squire. I will say, the Ampro 2 feels more resonant. I'm feeling more vibration in my body here. Um, what does that mean? I don't know. It might mean something to you, but uh, it might be you know, something to do with the quality of the wood. It might have something to do with the thickness of the finish. There could be a lot of factors going on there, but this one does feel like I'm getting more energy transferred to my body when I'm playing it. So, where does that put us? We've got a $1,600 guitar here. We've got a $1,000 guitar here. Uh, functionally, there's two big differences. The fretboard feel, the edges of the frets, the edges of the fretboard, and the resonance of the body. The weight is the same. The pickups can be whatever your taste is. If you like the stock pickups in here, that's great. I certainly do. If you like you know, upgraded pickups in these, uh, you know, that's fantastic too. There's a million options out there these days. Um, so yeah, the fretboard comfort, the resonance of the body is a factor. Selection of finishes. There's not a lot of selection in these. You could always pay for a refin, but then, you know, you're throwing another 400, 500 bucks at a guitar, which puts it at the same value as this roughly. It's a tough call. I kind of want to know what you guys think. Would you rather spend $1,000 on a Squire with upgrades versus $1,600 on an American Fender, the Ampro 2 here? My gut is telling me right now that I would personally, in this moment, prefer the Ampro 2. Even though it's $600 more, um, there's something about the... The, the, the quality of the playing with it, that pleasure factor I was talking about, there's something to that that you can't really easily upgrade on a cheaper guitar. I could take this to someone, I could try it myself and dress the frets, try rolling the fretboard myself, um, but that's much more of a major operation, uh, in my opinion anyways, you might have a different opinion, uh, than swapping pickups then swapping hardware, things like that. It's certainly an easier thing to screw up. It's a non-reversible sort of modification. It is doable, but it's, yeah, it's it's a much different sort of operation for sure. Um, you can pay for a refret. You can get a guitar refret for like 200, 250 bucks or something like that, depending on you know what your local tech charges. And you might be able to get them to refret in the same style as an American Fender or something like that. But yeah, the pleasure factor is winning it for me. $600 at the end of the day, if it's a professional tool for you, um, is not that big of a deal. I spend more than that on camera components on the regular <laughs> for my professional tools, you know? But the other side of that is, man, working on guitars is fun. There's a lot of fun to be had there. There's a lot of exploration to do. Uh, you start with a cheap one and you know what? You leave a lot of money in your bank account 
to try different pickups, to try different bridges, to try different tremolos, to try different pick guards if you want to, cosmetic stuff like that. You can take this guitar, even though technically on paper it's a thousand dollar guitar, you can take this guitar, beat the crap out of it and not have to worry because the bones are squire. You go home, you take off the parts that are broken and swap them out with a new Squire if you want to someday. Uh, you know, you can keep all these parts, swap them around, do whatever you want to do. There is undeniably a fun thing about modifying guitars. And I think it would be stupid for anyone to be like, oh, why did you spend a thousand dollars modifying a Squire when you could have, you know, even if you, you know, spent 1200 on one of the Venteras or something like that. There is an element of fun there. And if that's the fun that you're chasing, it's a no brainer. This is still a very playable, very fun guitar. I'd have no problem bringing this guitar into studio to record an album with it. You know, I'd have no problem being seen on a stage playing this guitar. Even when it was in closer to stock condition, I have no problem with that. Cheap guitars these days are very playable, very gig worthy. I even really liked the sound of the stock pickups in here uh, before I swapped them out. That would have been an interesting comparison the stock pickups. Maybe I should do a video where I take this back to stock to compare a stock Squire Jazzmaster <laughs> to the Ampro 2. Man, that's a lot of work. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, what do you guys think? I wanna know what you think. Would you prefer to spend more money and get you know a higher quality version of the Jazzmaster here or any model guitar? Or would you rather get a cheap guitar and go on an upgrade journey. And there's no third option there. You can't say, no, I wanna get a cheap guitar and do nothing. This is for people who like to do upgrades. <laughs> so closing thoughts for me, uh, if you've been watching a bunch of my videos, you know that I'm currently on a journey to sell off a bunch of stuff. I wanna sell a bunch of guitars to make room around here. And when I've sold off the right amount of guitars, I'm trying to get my background here to have less than 20 guitars in it. And I started out with uh, 28, 29 or something like that. I've already sold three. Uh, but now that I've done this and maybe after I do that video taking this back to, to stock, I think I am gonna choose this. I think I'm gonna put this guitar back on the market. I'm After I put this back to stock, I think I'm going to keep the components here. So don't write me begging for this stuff. <laughs> even though you might want to buy it for you know a fair price or whatever. I want to keep it because I might make a project guitar someday with these components. But yeah, I think I'll take this back to stock and sell it as a stock Squire Vintage Modified Jazz Master to make some room around here because this covers my Jazz Master needs. So anyways, I'm looking forward to reading all the comments, seeing what people have to say. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Do everything you do on YouTube. Do all that normal stuff. Smash the bell. Um, we have a lot of fun in the premieres when I premiere these videos, just chatting. It's a whole community. Uh, if you don't have the bell clicked to always, you're probably not gonna get notifications for when I start premieres and you're gonna miss out on those chats and those hangouts. Uh, honestly, that's the highlight of my day when I'm you know, editing and publishing videos is getting to chat with people and hang out and you kind of have this communal moment where we're all you know, watching the thing that I've worked on for two days. <laughs> so anyways, um, other than that, stay grounded. Bye everybody.